What is up you guys and welcome to the finals of the Valhalla Never Used League where we are going up against C. Basculin and um, his shoutouts, something like that. I'm For the life of me, like I put everything here, kind of forgot the name. I'm really sorry C. Basculin for what it's worth. Um, he has been, together with Styx, the most prominent threat in this league. So while this league hasn't gone as well as I wanted to, performance-wise by battlers and also by me, uh, which is that uh, due to a lot of showdown battles have become a stature here in, in this particular league, I've kind of forfeited my way around here, and it wasn't because I didn't want to play, it is just because, like I stated in a previous video, showdown for me really not a good mental space for me. However, for this particular Wi-Fi battle, I think I had the right mentality, and uh, I was really looking forward to this. I think I'm going up against a team I kind of expected. Um, he doesn't bring Verision, which I thought was strange. I thought Verision was doing really well against me. Uh, we are a special offensive, uh, no uh, naive sludge-waving uh, Dug Trio with a Quake and Stealth Rocks and Memento. Together with Specs Vicavolt, because Vicavolt is chatting between good and bad in this Warfare Battle. Uh, Embo, being a Scarf Set, standard stuff. Mesprit, being of a Call Mine nature with uh, Bolt Beam, because quite frankly it hits everything fairly alright. And Rotom, a more defensive variant this time around with Thunderbolt, Leafstorm, Grassium C, um, I think we had Defog and Toxic. So, with that said, I'm going to lead off with my Rotom, I do assume. Or was it Type Null? And see how it goes. I went for Rotom. As my opponent here leads off with his Whimsicott. Now, there are no reason for me of doing anything but going for Toxic. Moonblast does do a fair chunk, but the Whimsicott is a Pokemon not easily switch into. So, with that in mind, I'm just trying to soak damage here. Is I going to bring Vicavolt? Now, he goes for Moonblast, it does over 50%. I was like, okay. This is a very offensive Whimsy card, so the best way of actually wiggle myself around this opposing threat is actually kind of stall him, uh, believe it or not, but Null is able to soak a few hits here, and since I predicted the knockout to come through here, I'm going to bring in Rodin back again, and, and quite frankly, the only thing I do here is make sure that Toxic is building up in such a way that the Whimsy card is no longer a threat, as it goes for Mento, that was really good. Uh, definitely needed some really big opening here as my opponent here now is going to go for the Steelix. Now, Steelix itself not necessarily a big threat here. While I will set up rocks, uh, my only way of actually dealing with this head on out is actually go for Specs Bug Bus. No reason for me to go for Specs Energy Ball because it just alleviates Braviary to come in. So, with that in mind, he does miss the Rock Blast. I don't necessarily think that meant too much for the overarching theme of the battle as it's gonna roll me out. And we're going to, of course, bring in Null. Now, I was a little bit in between here, kind of predicting him to um, be able to go for a roar again. So I decided to send go for a turn. If I don't do any damage, that kind of goes for him too. As I'm going to go for a rest here. Now, this is a questionable player from my side. Since I did have switches to deal with Light and Rock head on. And it wasn't necessarily or no reason for me to try to go for sleep talk already. Most certainly when you know I get to return, doesn't necessarily do anything. And at plus six, this Pokemon becomes a massive threat. So with this in mind, I decided to switch out, predicting him to go for Stone Edge or, or his C move. Well, it goes for another, of course, of those sword stances. So now my only switching is actually Embo. That's the only one I can survive an Excella Rock. And that's not good. That means we waste uh, basically a proper switch in for really nothing as I'm gonna lock myself into Flare Blitz because his only switch into Flare Blitz would have been Slow King and I do well against Slow King. Now his Dustin Bravery definitely means that this Pokemon is Scarf. With that in mind, yes, we're gonna bring in the Type Null. Uh, it doesn't necessarily take anything at all from um, the U-turn. Now, here's the thing though, I really can't let him set, set up again as I'm gonna send in Doug Trio. Now he goes for Stone Edge here. It should have done a lot more, so this is showing me that it isn't necessarily an offensive variant here. And I'm going to go directly for Stealth Rock, trying to whittle him down, as uh, I really can't switch out versus this Pokemon. I really need to kind of, well, to kind of do what I do here, which is basically sack my um, Dug Trio. Now, Mesprit is back, and uh, Mesprit is only going to do one thing here, and uh, that is setting up. Um, I went for Thunderbolt here, uh, kicking off the Wakamberry. But at this point, all I really can do versus a Slow King is play the Calm Mind game. I was debating whether or not I should have gone to Null here and tried to uh, get off my rest turns from it, since I am Special Defensive. 
I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about Slow King, but I decided to set up with Mesprit. Since I felt it was in a good spot, there's no way that um, Slow King is winning this match of 1v1 due to me having Thunderbolt and whatnot, and Side Shock on that. So I do decide to kind of spam attack here, trying to see if I'm in range to take him out. I sadly aren't, and what makes this worse is that you no, know, he's clearly gonna slack off. I'm not in range of taking him out, so I'm better off going for another coal mine, trying to do that again. As um, as I really just hope somewhere down the line here that uh, I getting either I crit him and take him out, which I don't do, but I get him paralyzed. However, getting him paralyzed paralyzed is really good. Unfortunately. At this point, I'm debating whether to go for Thunderbolt or Call Mine again. I decided to go for Call Mine. Uh, thinking about it, I should probably try to just go for Thunderbolt until it gets fully crippled. Uh, because Thunderbolt should definitely be in a range of doing 50% soon. But I'm getting kind of greedy here. And it comes back to bite me. Because while Skull doesn't do anything, I do eventually here. While not now, I will get burned. Which will eventually put me in range where... Um, I will be in range of, I do believe, Accelerox, uh, Stone Edge, so there we go, that's the burn, which means my leftovers is alleviated, and it also means I'm kind of in a spot here where I I lose momentum. Now I go for a side shock here, basically to gauge the damage, it's physically defensive, which means Thunderbolt is overall the better attack to go for, and uh, eventually here I will be able to take out the Slow King, but the cost was kind of high, the paralyzation wouldn't work as I wanted to, and just overall, it didn't feel too good actually overall. Uh, since Mesprit all of a sudden becoming a spot here where Lycan Rock or of course Bravier, which is switch in, can pick us off. And yeah, no, he actually went for Lycan Rock. He went for Lycan Rock C move. I'm sorry, my bad here. He's gonna of course knock me out there. All of a sudden though, you know, it's not game over yet. I mean, at this point, my Rotom does a massive amount of work and Null is still in a fair position. Uh, I do decide to go with my Embor. I actually lock myself into Super Power, uh, mainly because I kind of wanted to alleviate myself of being in a range where um, I don't. Uh, if I went for Earthquake, Bravery would come in freely, and Flare Blitz would just put me in a bad range. Now, at this point, I do decide actually to sack uh, Embor. I'm actually going to pause this, and the reason I did that was because of one reason. I'm going to stop there. Uh, because we are now in a spot here where. It's a 50-50 between which of one of us win. The other one is a longer game, and I don't want to play for that longer game. The other one is being uh, pretty decisive, and that is... The only way for my opponent of actually knocking out this Rotom is to go for a Braver Return, which he went for against my Embor, is not enough to kill me. So with that in mind, the idle play for my opponent would have been to switch into his Lycan Rock to be able to come in with Braver, log himself into... Uh, Braver instead, and then I have to hope that Null can, you know, survive enough of those hits and then go for rest. That would have ideal play, I guess, or, or at least for me that was. So I actually went for Leaf Storm here instead to be able to knock out the Lycan Rock. Now, my opponent, unfortunately, um, keeps attacking, and while I do survive it, as stated, I should. Uh, I do go for Grass UMC, it is not enough to KO, shouldn't be. Uh, I was so surprised that I actually did decide to stay in. So, he's gonna knock out my Rotom, and my last Pokemon here is Type Null. And uh, from this point, yeah, I can't win this game at all. I simply cannot. And, um, yeah, to be honest here, and I'm really saying this with all the good intentions as I can, I really thought his play there was wrong. However, it did work in his favor, and um, quite frankly, he do win the finals due to this. Um, what I'm going to say here, which I think is really fair, is that, as you guys can see on his HP that he has left, it would have been extremely likely that had it gone for the other way around, which is bringing in Lycan Rock, losing that, then of course forcing himself to go to Brave Bird, he would not have been able to um, survive the Brave Bird damage and fall to that, and Type Null would have been in a better spot and probably win due to that. That said, like I said, it was the idle play in my... In my book, the other way would be that I actually went for Thunderbolt, knocking out the Braviary, and then, of course, uh, going for the Sleep Talk turns with Type Null, and whether or not I could win or lose versus the Lycan Rock. Um, that was less risky, I guess, for my opponent to do, but it wouldn't have been able to ensure him to win. It would have been a much, much riskier route. That said, though, we did decide to stay in, and I optimized for the, the worst play because I thought it was the strongest play for my opponent. 
And that's my mistake, because that's an over prediction that clearly backfired on me, and it made me def most certainly definitely lose this game. Now that said, I don't play too badly here, actually. For um, I actually had a timer on me in this battle <laughs> for every turn. I had a timer for 30 seconds, so I couldn't make a decision until 30 seconds has gone. Just to kind of get myself in that mental stability of thinking the right thing before going about it. That said, we do lose this game, and I think I'll lose this game fairly. Sebastian had a, much, a lot stronger season than me, so had I won this, I would kind of feel uh, that, I, that I cheated the system and still won. Um, and this was a better season than anything, so Sebastian is definitely a worthy champion here. And I, I'm fine with being a runner-up. Quite frankly, you know, as I said, I played, I think, four out of eight games, and I think that's, that, that's kind of shitty. Being that I actually run the league and you know optimize to not play on showdown because I don't like it, uh, but that's my problem, you know. And clearly, I have to deal with that. Um, so, with that said, I really want to thank Sebastian and everybody else who's been a part of this season. Um, looking forward to coming back. Just gonna do some rough uh, edits that needs to be made for this because I think the balance of teams was really, really unfair for some matchups. So, with that said, I really want to thank everybody for watching. And yeah, have a nice day, you know, and whatnot. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye.